This is the Influencer Entrepreneurs Podcast with Jenny Melrose, where I strategize with business owners on how to grow and scale their businesses to hit their income goals. This is episode 198 of the Influencer Entrepreneurs Podcast with Jenny Melrose. Today, I am speaking with Amira Alvarez, and we're going to be talking about how quick decision-making skills are linked to self-trust. The interesting part of this conversation that you're going to hear is it kind of took a turn in a way in which I wasn't expecting, which is always one of my favorite things, because we started talking about mindset, and I realized how my routine of my morning has since changed from COVID. And I never really got back to setting up that morning routine where I worked on my mindset and took time to actually slow my brain down. So I'm going to talk in this um, episode in the interview, we kind of dive into what this looks like for our morning routines, how if you can take the time to slow your brain down, new ideas kind of come to you. And we talk about it as far as being intuitive. But we are going to dive into this episode. I appreciate you guys for listening in, and here we go. Welcome to the podcast, Amira. How are you? I am super. Thank you so much for having me, Jenny. I am so excited to have this conversation with you. Before we really dive in, will you introduce yourself and a little bit about your business? Absolutely. So my name is Amira Alvarez. I'm the founder and the CEO of The Unstoppable Woman. We are a coaching company that helps women first and foremost with financial freedom, right? Like how do you create that consistent cash flow, scale your business, get it really going? And in the process of doing that, we help you be unstoppable in all parts of your life, not just on the cash flow side, but in how you're showing up in your relationships, whether that's with partners or team or, or your husband or your wife or whomever it is, um, health, fitness, all these other places that ended up being super important to me to have next level success in, if you will, not just the financial side. But so that's where, that's the sweet spot where we work. Like, how do you have an unstoppable life? And um, that's what I love helping women with. I love that. And I love the way the words that you use, unstoppable, it just sounds so empowering. And that's exactly what I think of anytime I go to listen to your podcast. I'm like, yes, here we go. We get to dive into something specific. Yes. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) Excellent. So let's start. How would you define a decision-making skill? It's such a good, it's such a, so this comes up all the time. I see this. If you're in business for yourself, let's just back up. And, and frame frame it a little bit around like why is decision making so important when you're in business? It's important in your life, your personal life as well. But when you're running a business, I don't know about you, Jenny, but like my day is a thousand and one decisions. Like that is the basis of the business is like left, right, straight, left, right, straight. Like which direction are we going? Everything from like. Think about it. If you're just starting out in business and you're writing the blog post or you're trying to figure out the social media post, like there's a thousand and one decisions. Like, what do I say here? Okay. What's my call to action? Is there a call to action? Like, what am I doing with this right now? And if you don't know how to make decisions for yourself and for your business, you will be stymied, meaning you'll be stuck in indecision. And so you're going to be stuck spending an inordinate amount of time and energy on these little things that don't need to take up a lot of time. And sometimes big decisions, like, okay, let me say, most people think big decisions need to take up a lot of time. I teach my clients how to close the gap on time by making quicker decisions on the bigger things as well. And closing the gap on time is so important because if you want to quantum leap your business, if you want to reach your financial goals, your either your monthly goals or your little bonus money goals, whatever your, your data point of success is, we can do that over a long period of time. And then it takes you longer to achieve it. And quite frankly, people lose motivation often if they're not getting wins along the way or 
you can close the gap on time, get some of those wins, some of those successes early and feel better. And then you can keep going. But if you take a long time to make decisions because you've been taught either consciously or subconsciously that you have to overthink things, then it takes you longer to actually achieve your goals, feel good about what you're doing, get the motivation to to, do do more and and keep rolling. So there's this huge follow-on effect that's a, a big problem if you can't make a decision quickly about what is right in front of you right now. That is such a great way to explain it because so often I would think as decision making as not necessarily the problem, it's more the fact that they're afraid of it. That was the way I always kind of saw it in my own head is that I would or I would hear people saying, I'm scared of making a mistake. I'm scared to move forward. I feel like I have analysis paralysis, right? I sit there. But I never made the connection that it's really about that decision-making skill that you have to put into practice and have to be willing to take every time that you do it. So it's such a great way to explain it. I think there's something really important in what you said, because the thing that stops people on the, you know, the brand's the unstoppable woman. So let's talk about what stops people is that fear of making a mistake. Because what happens, and then you have to peel back the layers and where we got programmed to think that it was um, hugely problematic to make a mistake. And and we can go down that road if you want, because I think it's really important to understand. But people are afraid of making a mistake because, like, what will someone think about me? Will I lose love? Um, Will I lose belonging? Will Will I be thrown out of the tribe? Um, will there be judgment? Will I lose money? Which is actually what most people end up kind of playing at um, and being in big fear about. But it's actually not such a big, like, if, if that's the tip of the iceberg, the, the losing, the love, the losing, the belonging, the, the connections, um, the sense of worthiness is what I think people are really afraid of. And the rub here is you cannot grow a business. If you don't make mistakes, you cannot grow yourself. If you don't make mistakes, the whole idea of of life is to grow into more, become more, step into more, have more life. You cannot do that with the level of expertise and knowledge that you have currently. You have to put yourself out there, risk something, experience the result and not make yourself So small if it doesn't go as expected, but have the mindset and perspective to, I call it the law of relativity. That's how I see the the world. Like nothing is big or small, bad or good until you make it so, until you give it that level of meaning. So if you can make a decision, experience the result of it, it is what you wanted. It's not what you wanted. Either way, what are you going to make that mean? If you mean, if you make it mean, I'm always in growth, I'm going to use this to grow. Fantastic. If you make that mean, I'm unworthy, I'm not enough, I'm unlovable, um, I'm terrible at business, I'm bad with money, I don't have what it takes, right? Like that's the, 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 the inner critic in our head. Yeah. Then it, you're going to use it to stop yourself. But that's just an excuse to stay at the same level. Yeah. It's so it's really comes down to mindset, right? You just, the way that you kind of set that up was you had that idea of being in the ability to grow with the allowing ourselves to make mistakes. And then also the other side of it, of just immediately thinking that you're not worthy, you're not going to be able to do it. I think that I definitely see with a lot of different clients. I'll have people say, well, I want to create a product. I have this audience but I don't know what to create for them, or I don't know if it's going to work. And that's always a push is, well, of course you don't know if it's going to work. You haven't tried it yet. You haven't put it out there. You haven't figured out the mistakes and then gone through and made the tweaks. I think one of the hardest things to do in business is to launch a new product or service, right? That launch period can be so overwhelming. And so also it can knock you down a couple steps. And I don't think people expect that to happen. Absolutely. So if you will, let me just talk about all the ways that's happened for me. So like I've been in business 
for six or seven years now. Year one, 30K. Year two, 90K. Year three, cross the six-figure mark, 138. That was like extraordinary. But I didn't have the launch down or everything down at that point. And then year four was when I made that big quantum leap. And by the way, uncertain the whole time, not sure about what was happening, persistent in going forward regardless, experiencing the mistakes, lots of ups and downs emotionally in my head with all that stuff we were just talking about. And and so if, if there's someone in your audience that's listening and they're in their head with that, like the thing I have is stay persistent. Okay. Get your mindset right. You have to work on your mindset right, right away. I mean, and do not, it's 80% mindset, 20% tactics in my my book. And in that fourth year, I went from 138 to 700K. The difference was not in the product service offering any of that. It was in my mindset. It's how I started looking at things, how I started looking at myself. And so, okay, so then you grow a seven-figure business. It's great, right? Like you go from from this to this. I love that. It's part of my story. I, I, I teach my clients how to do that, all of that, right? But now that I have a seven-figure business, I'm still testing and tweaking. We just made, uh, you know, we, we have this great, I was talking to you about this earlier. We have this great program called the Morning Mindset Club and people were eating it up like crazy. It was a, a free offering. It was amazing. And, and, Behind the scenes, it takes my team probably 20 to 30 hours a week to put it together. There's, there's a lot of moving pieces to it. It is a full program. But we were doing it as a, a great thing that people could access. And then we decided, you know, this would make a great membership program, like a subscription program. Like everyone's doing subscription programs. I, I love that concept. This is perfect for that. I've been waiting for the right time to do that. Let's do it. Meanwhile, we had already put it on our podcast. We had like the thing that you could get daily in your email, but you could also get it weekly in the podcast. Like we had put it out. We went live with a subscription model to it. And it was like, wait, wait, nothing. Like really, it was like, it went from like, we love this to like crickets. And so when you said, you know, we're talking about decisions, we're talking about mistakes. We're talking about the launch model here. Like we launched something and it was fabulous. It took off, but then we tweaked it, made it pay very inexpensive, $10 a month. Like this was not a, like a make it or break it thing. But the thing was we had it on our podcast for free also. Okay. So we hadn't, we, we, there were lots of reasons why we did that. And uh, it made sense at the time, but as we evolved, it didn't, it didn't work. And we had to course correct Along the way, we're looking at the data. You have to make love to the numbers, right? Like, what's the data? And then we made another decision. And that's one, which was to put it back to free for the next six months as we finish up this portion of it. And then it will be a paid program and it'll be, we have a whole plan for it. I tell this story to say seven years in, we make mistakes, okay? But the difference is I haven't crucified someone on my team. I haven't crucified myself, right? It's like, what do the numbers say? Let's figure this out. Um, What does my gut say? Let's figure this out. Let's make a new decision. And that's how you don't fail is if you keep making a decision that moves you forward. Now, it's not always the right decision, like, but it moves you forward and and you'll win, if you will, if you keep, keep doing that. Thank you for sharing that story. I think a lot of times people, especially the, those that are starting to really want to take it full time, assume that those that they look at as like experts that have been doing this for a while, have all the answers and know all the things and just continue to grow. They never fall on their face. I appreciate you so much for sharing that story because it does. It makes you vulnerable and shares exactly the fact that you are still going to make mistakes and have to figure out what works and what doesn't work. It's part of this business. I think trying to really define the entrepreneurial journey is that roller coaster ride, right? We've got those huge highs where we're like, yes, we've got this. We've got this figured out. And then all of a sudden the rug just gets pulled out from underneath us. And we're like, yeah, nope, still don't got it. (laughs) And, and here's the thing. The thing that shifted for me when I made that big quantum leap 
And, and, and this can happen when you're first starting to, okay. You don't have to wait until you've crossed the six figure mark for this. Like people have big quantum leaps going for, from zero to something or from a thousand to 5,000 a month. Like that, those are quantum leaps. That feels enormous when you're, you're doing it. Ask me how I know, right? Like that felt enormous when I was doing it. Like it was like, I, I remember um, all over the place, Jenny, but I remember when I was first starting out, I, I heard someone say that you could make $5,000 a month. And I was like, I could do that. Yep. And, and the question I asked myself, and I'll give this to your audience. The question I asked myself is, who is that woman? Who is the woman who makes $5,000 a month? And I like, I got the download. I'm like, she's this, she's this, she's this, she's this, she's this. And I started stepping in to being that woman. And that has been a technique that I've used at every level. Like now, I mean, I have my next level goals. I'm sure you do too, right? Like, and I'm like, who is that woman, right? Like, how is she, how is she showing up differently than this woman who I love, okay? Who I think is great. Like, you don't want to use this as a rejection of self, okay? But because here's the thing. You want to appreciate what you have right now, the relationship, the house, the, the kids, the, the, the money, the person you are at the same time as you see that, you know, you have this more life directive, you want to grow. What is that next growth stage? And you, I often see people have conversations with me and they will tell me what they really want to achieve. And then say, but everything's good, good right now. Like have, I should, I don't have anything to complain about. That is a, like, if you hear yourself say that, that is an excuse that you're not like bringing back to the theme of this conversation. You're not deciding to go for more. It's actually, if you hear yourself saying that, it's a sign that you're keeping yourself trapped and you're unwilling to decide to, to, to take the risk of going for more because it's not certain. Okay. Yes. Does that make yeah. sense? Did it make a It totally there? does make sense. I love the way that you explain it as stepping into it. Um, because I think that right now, and you and I kind of talked about this briefly when I interviewed on your podcast, is that COVID right now is making things so uncertain that a lot of people are afraid to take stocks forward because not only for the financial side of things, but so many of us have had to take on different roles that we're not used to, like being the teacher as well as being the mother, um, and still taking care of you running your business. Um, so I think no, it makes so much sense. So I want to actually go to um, really talking about what decision-making skills do you feel are vital to a successful entrepreneur? Because I think having those skills and then being able to put them into practice to give those very strategic steps would be amazing. Are you asking, let me get more specific here with you. Are you asking like what kinds of decisions you need to make to move your business forward quickly, like categories of decisions or like in the decision-making process, how you have to do it? Yeah, Sue, so I was thinking in the process of how you have to actually do it. Well, quickness, okay? We talked about that already, okay? You, you actually have to train yourself to make quick decisions. I'm not saying be flip. I'm not saying um, make a decision when you... How do I say this? You have to learn how to read yourself. You've got a gut response, intuition. You can talk about it being spirit speaking to you, however you get that, but you know, you actually know when it's something is a yes, your mind might be flipping out. That's too much money. I don't have time. I need to get my credentials already. I can't do this for like, those are all the reasons to stop. Those are the excuses. Those are the stories you tell yourself. Those will keep you stuck. Okay, not moving to the next level. But if you learn how to drop in, recognize, oh, that's the sign that it's a yes. I, it seems crazy. It seems like I don't have the money to do this. It seems like the wrong thing to do. Um, but I need to move forward anyways because I got that intuitive yes. That's what you need to do. Then the rub here is you do that. You do that faster and faster and faster. And then you triangulate afterwards. Like I made that decision. That felt like a good decision, but it didn't, didn't actually play out. Can I tell a story about that? 
Please. I love examples. Those okay. are my favorite. I'm telling you all the like falling on your face stories. Okay. Because it happens all the, so here's the thing. It happens all the time. And I have a seven figure business. That's like, that's what I want people to know. It's like, I had the seven figure business, not be- because I didn't make a mistake. It's because I did make, I made the decision. It was a mistake, but I learned from it. Okay. So this is a $30,000 mistake. I don't wish it on anyone. Okay. Who wants to, who wants to quote unquote, lose $30,000, but really it has saved me millions of dollars. Okay. So it depends how you look at it. So this is a couple of years back. I hired a marketing person, a contractor to do a very specific thing to help me with in my business. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do the, the top of the line. Let's get him to do like all of it, all the bells and whistles, uh, he came recommended $30,000. Okay. I'm reading the contract. All my red flags are going off. I send him questions on the contract. And he's like, you're the only person who's ever asked me questions about the contract. That should have been a big turnaround and walk in the other direction. If anyone, here's the thing. Anyone tries to guilt you about asking a question about a contract run, don't walk. Okay. They're not like, if someone has a question about my coaching contracts, I'm like, yeah, that's a great question. Here's what it means. I understand it's legalese. This is what it means. If you're not comfortable with that, I totally get it. Right. Like that's my stance. I want happy. Like this is like, what is the adage? Good fences make good neighbors, right? Like this is about having a great relationship, but some structure there. Um, but I thought, okay, well, he comes very recommended from someone I admire and respect and who's further along than I am. So I must be nervous. I must be um, not at the right level to, to do this. I need to step forward. I just need to say yes. But all my gut senses, like talking down to me, all that, I was like, not listening to it. Go forward, do it anyways. Biggest effing mistake, okay? Like, was not worth it, was not good. Like the first meeting was fine, but everything, the execution on it was not quote unquote lost $30,000. Now I know what those feelings in my body feel like. I now know what a red flag feels like. That has saved me hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars in go forward. Like I know when I'm talking to someone and I'm interviewing what my, my, my intuition means on that, but you don't learn that if you don't take the risk. Does that make? That totally does make sense. And I, again, didn't think of it that way because to me, it it goes back to, well, maybe it was that strategy or that like technique that I was trying to put in place, which was learning that I could learn from. But what you're saying is it's the actual like physical feelings that you started to get of like that red flag feeling and that intuition of something's not right, that you were able to start to really trust yourself and know when something wasn't sitting right in your business. That's, I love that. And we have something called the decision-making matrix that I was thinking about for you right before I got on this call. So um, uh, I'm happy to share that with your your audience, if you will, because it's a really great um, intersection between the logic side of us and the intuitive side of us. So it's it's this great decision-making matrix that's like, if this if this is yes, go here. If this is yes, go here. If it's no, go here, right? And it walks you through the logic of making an investment decision. But then we also talk about this intuitive side, this, this gut side, the mindset piece to it that you have to, to learn. So um, do you think your audience would like that? Do you want the URL? Yes, that? I would love that. And we will make sure that we link to it in the show notes. Go ahead. What is it? Okay, it's the unstoppablewoman.com. So you have to put the the in front, the unstoppablewoman.com slash decide. Okay. All right. And it's I just talked to my team about this, so we'll get it up in the next I don't know when you're going live with this, but we'll get yeah. it up before we, we, we go live. Okay. Yeah, you've got some time, so we're good. We're actually recording it's early September. This won't come out till like towards the end of October. So we are good. Oh, yeah. Great. Okay. 
Um, no, that's great. So you say like that, the matrix that you're talking about is for the financial investment that it's going to take a little bit longer. But then there's also this other side of decision making, which we can kind of define as intuitive and that gut feeling. Um, is there times in your business where you feel like you use the intuitive side more than you would use like a, the matrix of like really going through the pro- uh, process of if then, then, then this? Whether you're a seasoned podcaster or just thinking of starting a podcast, you need to listen to Buzzcast from the folks at Buzzsprout. Here we go. Buzzcast covers everything a podcaster should know from marketing strategies and how to make money from your podcast to the latest and greatest tech and industry insights to keep you on the cutting edge. Follow Buzzcast by clicking the link in the description or go to buzzcast.buzzsprout.com and keep podcasting. Absolutely. So, so, I mean, I think, I think you need both. Okay. Cause the, the, the law of cause and effect says there's specific causes for specific effects. So if you, you do need to then like when I use the law of cause and effect, I'm looking at like, okay, what's the outcome that I want? And is this going to get me that? And I'm going through this decision matrix that I, I mentioned is, is the thought process that can happen in a split second once you get good at it. But I, I went through and I was like, okay, how do I think about making decisions and what in terms of the logic um, behind it? And you need that. But then there's this um, aspect that is very much, you just know that's the right person to hire. That's, That's the right thing to do right now. Let's go. And so your question was, how much of is it, how much of it is intuitive? Mm -hmm. It's actually hard for me to slice those things apart, Jenny, because I do the the logic stuff so so um, innately now. Um, but I, it's not that I ignore the logic. I, I, I'm not going to say that you 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 need to have some logic on it. But there are things that are I have said this is crazy. Why am I doing this? But it was very clear that some sort of source outside of myself was directing me and saying, make that phone call. I'm like, I'm scared though. Don't make me do it. Okay, I'm going to do it. And I've learned to trust that inner voice. Some people call it spirit. Some people call it source. Some call it intuition, inner voice, whatever you want to call that, that deep divine knowing that will often will tell you what your growth step is that, and it's never going to be, here's the thing, Jenny, it's never going to be comfortable. Those big growth steps, the things that really move you forward, you have to decide to take them, even though they're scary. And people oftentimes ask me, what, how do I know the difference between fear that's telling me not to do something and fear that's telling me Go for it, even though you're scared. Like, be courageous here. Yes. How can you tell the difference between the two? Yes. You're not going to like this answer. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just warning you right now. So the, the answer is what we started the conversation out with. You have to practice this. You have to say yes and do it anyways and experience the consequences and go, actually, that was fear telling me red light, stop, bad decision versus that was... I'm scared, but I need to be courageous here. Good decision. Okay. Yes. And really every decision is a good decision. If you have the, the mental perspective of I'm going to grow from this. So I do not have a pre experience way of giving you or anyone listening, like, here's how to know it's not fear versus, um, Fear, fear saying to stop versus fear saying um, just in the face of, of growth. Um, it, it does take experience. That said, do you really want what you're going for? Okay. Right. That is a huge aspect of what I teach. Desire is causative. Desire leads the way. If you want something and it's that, like, I really want something like, the guy I'm dating right now, that was a scary thing to step into. 
But I really, I was like, yeah, I really want this. So I'm, I, I took the actions anyways. The, the seven figure business. I was nowhere near that. I, I, that year that I went from 138 to 700, I was making 138 and I was banging my head against the wall. Like I was working super hard. I still put the effort in without a doubt, but like I w- did not, I couldn't see myself out of a paperback. Okay. I made a big decision to sign up for coaching and that was scary, but I wanted it. Like I was like, I can make my annual income, my monthly income. I heard someone tell me that. And I was like, I want that. And Jenny, I'm I, like, I was just like most people out there. How am I going to make this work? How does the marketing work? How do I make decisions? Like, what do I invest in? Do, do I just have to work harder and harder? Like, like tactics, what are the, where to go, right? Mm-hmm. But I, I was like, I heard that. And I was like, I want that. I, something resonated inside of me that said, I want that. So I claimed that desire. I signed up for the coaching, scared the living daylights out of me because it was an investment that was bigger than I ever imagined making. Mm-hmm. And I was actually like crying when I signed on the dotted line, like not crying from sadness, but crying from like the cells realigning, going to the next level kind of thing. And best decision ever did multiple times made my annual income, my monthly income, right? Like how did that happen? Kind of thing. Right. And, um, but that's from desire. Okay. So if you have a desire, do not suppress it. And what happens often for people is they delay making the decision and then their subconscious programming, meaning their, their set patterns, of behavior click into gear, which is like, let me ask my husband, let me put that off. Um, let me think about it for another month. Let me take this accreditation course first. Um, let me do this other thing that I need to do, which are all ways of not making the decision and putting off the thing that you desire going for because you're scared and that's not how to grow. So if, de- if the desire is really there, say yes to it. It's, 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 it's the way life calls you forward and, and teaches you to grow into more. Yes. I love the way that you also talked about like the whisperings, like it's almost like something comes and you're like, oh, that's a good idea. Um, and do you find that there's a time when those kind of come to you more often? So when would you say, cause I know you have like a morning routine that you kind of do is, would you say that that's where it kind of comes? Absolutely. Is it the same for you? Yes. And it actually, this is bringing me back to the fact that I realized that it was when I was meditating and I haven't since COVID mm-hmm. and the intuition has kind of slowed down a bit. And I'm realizing that as we're talking and you're talking about stuff into desire and I'm like, but I haven't been hearing those things. Oh wait, I know I haven't been <laughs> hearing those things. I'm not taking time to quiet my brain ever. So yeah. we talk a little bit about your morning routine and what that kind of looks like. Yeah, absolutely. So it's changed over time. It's, it's, it's evolved. I, I would love to share with you what it was, say, three, four years ago and what it is now, because I think I needed different things when I was first starting my business and or the first few years in business than what I need now. And, and people can plug in and, and pull what they want from this. So Three or four years ago, I would wake up with anxiety every morning. Like, I was just like, there was already a a tiger chasing me. Like, it was just like, it it was like a house of cards. Like, if I didn't do that very next thing, it was all going to come crashing down. And so there was like this this drive um, to go further. And it came out in waking up with anxiety and not feeling good enough and feeling just anxious uh, and, and unhappy about my life. So... I would take my trusty yellow pad, still use the same yellow pad, you know, uh, on subscription order, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and I would just write out whether it was like um, freehand, like morning pages, just journaling, getting it all out. And then I started doing a mindset sequence that really helped me. And that's something that I teach in my, my business acceleration bootcamp, because 
I really believe that you have to have the, the mindset, uh, the ability to clear your own mindset in order to, to go forward. And so I did that. I swear every single day, every morning I was like, um, I, I articulated the thought that was causing me the pain. And then I went through this particular sequence to get at the root of it. And then, um, I felt freer and clearer. And then I was able to go through my day and I could actually let the ideas come to me. Um, yeah. I will also say that I would get lots of ideas walking the dog or running because there's, there's bilateral movement and there's crossing over, um, between the two sides of your brain. And there's a lot of synergy that happens there. And I would, you know, use my phone and do like little memo recordings right. as I was walking. Um, the, now I study every morning. So I, I will, I study and I plan my day and I do some quieting presencing practices. And, and then I go for my walk or my ride. But the study is really important. And this is what we were talking about with the Morning Mindset Club which is free guys. We went back to that for that previous conversation and you can find that. Can I give a pitch for that? Of course. Go right yeah. ahead. So that's the unstoppable woman.com slash mindset. And it'll take you there. Um, and you know, how about it? It's a great, it's a great program. And we give you a little audio clip on how to think yourself into exponential success. And, and there's journal prompts, little quiz to lock in the learning. It's great stuff. So I will read something every morning that helps me with how I am perceiving the world and thinking about the world. Um, so my mindset study is super important. Now the qualification here is I was brought up, I don't know about you, Jenny, but I was brought up with study, like what we did in high school, what we did in college, like that kind of um, I need to have a skill set. Like I need to learn. How do I say this? The the I need the degree. I need the certification to prove that I've learned this. And I would study for the test, and I would get a good grade on the test, and then I would study for the next test. That serves you to a certain extent, but if you're running your own business, you have to fundamentally manage your mind. So all the study I do is how to manage your mind, because if you know how to manage your mind, you will know how to achieve your goals. And if you don't know how to manage your mind, you will get in your way all the time. So the kinds of stuff that I study are not how to write a, a, a good sales page. copy or lead magnet or stuff that I, that I study. I mean, I read about that stuff too. I find it extraordinarily helpful, but that's not my morning. Okay. My morning is, um, amazing people who have incredible clarity about how to look at the world. Okay. Because I want to raise my level of awareness because here's where I started. This is the level of like, okay, started down here started my business here, level of awareness. You can only see what you can see from this level, but there are thousands of levels of awareness up here. And ever so briefly, this is something I, I teach. If people are interested in it, please reach out to me. But like that, if you're here at this level of awareness, the law of vibration says only things at that same level of awareness will be matched to you because you're vibrating at a particular level. So if I want bigger and better things to be matched to me, okay, in this case for your, your clients, like they want more cash flow, right? They want to build their business. Well, you have to get to the next level of awareness for those things to match you. And you do that not by staying in your own DIY world. That doesn't work. Okay. That's your existing level of awareness. You have to Grow your mind so that it's at a new level of awareness. And when you're at that new level of awareness, you're, you're now not on the, the lobby. You're now on the 10th floor and things look different from there. And, and different people are attracted to you. Different opportunities come to you. Different ideas come to you, right? The, the intuition that we've been talking about, yeah. the little divine downloads. And so every, every, that's what I do every morning is I, I open my books and I have a library of 
things that I look at every day. And then I have specific, you know, I'll rotate uh, something new will come in. Um, but that's how I, that's how I keep going to the next level of awareness. Plus working with mentors. I mean, without a doubt, like the biggest jumps that I've made have been working with other people that are so far ahead of me that they're calling me to their level of awareness and they're not coming down my level by any means. Right. So yeah. What, um, the books that you're talking about, some of the resources, do you have some names that you could kind of give us? Is it all on mindset or Hey, are you a podcaster who needs a best friend? Well, I am here to be your podcast bestie. Podcast bestie is a best friend to podcasters trying to grow and monetize their shows. First, it was a popular Substack. Now it's also a popular podcast. I'm Courtney Kosak. I have three of my own indie podcasts. Yes, I am addicted. And I've also worked on top shows for Netflix, PayPal, Girlboss. And I've even had a number one celebrity show on Apple Podcasts. And I am here to give you all the behind the scenes tips. So check out Podcast Bestie on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Well, yes, it's all in mindset without a doubt. Okay. okay. Um, there, there are tons of things that are not on mindset yeah. that are super, super useful, but the things that I study in the morning, is that what you're looking for? Yes. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Yeah. Okay. Let me give you my, my top three. Okay. Uh, Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, classic seminal book. Everyone's heard it. Um, when I read it the first time, I was like, why is everyone so like, this is like, there's so many lists. I don't get it. Like what, what's the big, what it's not well organized. And what is he talking about? Like I was really quite judgmental and irritated by the whole thing. I, 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 yeah, I, no, I appreciate that because that's probably one of the ones that I've put aside and was like, Oh my God, I can't get through this. Right. And I'm, I was just like, Oh, it's impenetrable. Why are people talking? Like, like this is this incredible thing. I study that every day. I well, like that would be a lie if I said every day because I've missed a few days. But that that is the book that's like it, I travel with it. I'm with I'm like I'm committed to it, and that's what right now we're studying in the morning mindset club. So um, I, Jenny, check check out the the teachings on the podcast and the morning mindset club on that because I break down each sentence, each paragraph, this is what he means by this. And this is how to apply it. And this is what you need to think about in relationship to your life and to your business. And I, I make it applicable because it's such a powerful book, but I didn't know how to apply it when I started. So that's what that's about. Then um, working with the law, Raymond Hollywell. Okay. Woo. If you guys have been like, what is she talking about? Law of cause and effect. What is she talking about? Law of relativity. But like there are seven foundational laws that um, are, are, are principles. Law of rhythm, law of um, gender, law of cause and effect, law of vibration, um, uh, law of perpetual transmutation of energy. And there's one that I'm forgetting because I can't remember which direction I started in. But anyway, so there are these laws. And... Okay. They fund it when I understood them and started studying them and applying them, they, it changed my world. Um, so one of my favorite books on that is working with the law of Raymond Hollywell, hugely helpful. If I'm challenged, I'll flip that open and like, I'll go, yep. okay, what does that say? And I'll just like, let that infuse my uh, ability to, to clarify the situation. And then the science of getting rich by Wallace Waddles. Have you read that one? I have not. Okay. That's a, all three of these, like in my opinion, it, are run, don't walk. Okay. Like this needs to be in there. And, and I, I also, I know I'm sounding like broken record now, so I apologize guys, but I also, I also teach this. We have a teaching program on the science of getting rich, which is hugely popular and people love it because it takes each chapter and like explains what he's talking about and how to apply it and, and workshop it with you. Um, because that's also written early 20th century, different kind of language. What did he mean by this? Um, it's a thin book. It's not, it's not impenetrable, like thinking grow rich, right. but it's, it's a powerhouse. If people know the movie, the secret, right. The, that yeah. was like a very big 
big sort of took off and it really made the law of attraction uh, popular. And the law of attraction is a subsidiary law to the law of vibration, which is something that most people don't get and most people don't teach. And that's part of the lineage that I came down through in terms of how I understood and learned the laws. Mm-hmm. How you're vibrating is, is, is what's going to attract things into your life. It's not just wishful thinking or imagination or visualization. All those things are good, but it's like, what is your level of vibration? What, what frequency are you working at? So um, the science of getting rich is what that move, what inspired that, that movie. And um, all of these books can be looked at through the lens of, Oh, that's so woo woo. And that's too impractical. And that's just airy fairy lightness or the way I work them, my personal practice and how I teach them is how do we make this applicable? Okay. Because that's the rub. So study alone is not enough. You have to act on it and you have to act on it in a particular way, but raise, but but study is, is really that first step. So those are the three main ones. What's on my uh, bedside table right now is a Neville Goddard book. You know, like I go through different different ones, but I would start. Those are the sort of like canons of my library. Okay, thank you for those. We're going to make sure that we link to those in the show notes for sure, so that we can um, take a look, dive into them, and then also have your guidance with the podcast and the resources that you've shared that you also have. Where else? Amir, are the best places to connect with you? Is there like a particular social media platform that it's like easy to DM with you or get in contact with you on? Yeah. So the, I'm, I'm more on Facebook. We have an Instagram channel. I'm more on Facebook. I'm also on LinkedIn. So you can find us like whatever your favorite is, we'll be there. Okay. We have a Facebook group that, um, you can find us at that's great. And then, uh, uh, like if you're loving this stuff and you want to go faster, sooner kind of thing. And like, um, please reach out to someone on my team, a chat on their website or on Facebook, uh, you know, DMS, whatever. Um, and we'll get you hooked up with, with the right thing for where you are right now in your business. But a great first step is to come to our unstoppable woman summit. It's all about this intersection of personal, how we're showing up personally, like our inner game and like, more than we've talked about today, self-worth, identity, self-esteem, um, confidence, but like how we're actually showing up in our beingness at the intersection of how you grow your business, like the tactical cash flow steps that you take. And it's a beautiful community of women that, that come to that. So if, if people are interested in that, that's the unstoppablewoman.com slash summit. And that is like, if you want to, it's virtual this year. So, um, but we've done it once already virtual and it was like fantastic. People loved it. Like we, we still did networking and we still did workshopping and people like met amazing women at all different levels. I just want to let you know that they're like people come and they, they're just starting their business and people come who've been in business for 15, 20 years. So like really like everyone's welcome. Everyone's moving to that next level of awareness and, and, and growing. So those would be the, the places that I would. Excellent. Well, but we will do is we're going to make sure we link to those in the show notes. I appreciate you so much for taking the time to speak with me and my audience. I just so many great resources. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me on, Jenny. This was so much fun. Of course. All right, guys. Well, there you have it. Clearly, this conversation took a turn that I wasn't expecting, as you could hear. And not sure if you could hear it, but there was almost a bit of embarrassment on my part for realizing that I was holding myself back from not kind of stepping into that role of that I should have been taking on because I did get overwhelmed. The fact of the matter, though, is that I need you to realize that that overwhelm that I felt is probably something similar to what you're going through. And it's okay. No matter how long it takes you to snap out of it, it's a matter of if you can snap out of it. And getting used to those feelings that you have when you are doing hard things in your business and in your life in general. I know this time is crazy and has been for, I feel like I've been saying this for the past six months now, but 
You can take steps forward. You can step into being that unstoppable woman like Amira talked about. I appreciate you guys so much for listening in. If you would take the time to leave a rating review on your favorite podcasting app, I would so appreciate it. You know, I also love having conversation with you on DM via Instagram. So please feel free to put up a story. Tag me at Jenny underscore Melrose and tell me how you're listening, what your biggest takeaway was. All right, guys, until next time, I will see you all then. 